Hey guys, I'm in Brighton today doing an inspection for a home that is just over a couple of years old. The homeowner bought this home for over five million dollars. Let's take a quick look on the condition of this home and see if we can find some non-compliant works. Let's go! This is a double story home consisting of brick veneer to the ground floor and polystyrene cladding to the upper floor. It is just under four years old. However, our client is the first occupant of this home. This wet weather is no match for my Navy SEAL training. Let's see what we're dealing with. Upper floor render appears to be a cementitious concrete render look that has already given in cracks were visible from the lower ground and water must be getting in through these cracks causing this unsightly stain and a possible material deterioration Let's put on our clean boots before entering the home. Alright, let's go. This home was a fairly big home. It consisted of an elegant kitchen a spacious living area with evidence of water ingress a nice swimming pool a laundry powder room study one common bathroom and four bedrooms. It appears that the rain is here to stay. Let's turn our heat vision on to help us locate any hidden leak locations. One leak recorded. Two. Three. This must be coming from the balcony above. This fourth leak shows the swelling in the skirting, which is indicating to me that the water under this timber floor is being wicked up by the skirting. The children's bedroom contained our fifth leak. And our sixth leak was in the children's bedroom. Even the carpet showed evidence of elevated moisture levels. Where can this water be coming from? Let's undertake a non-invasive moisture reading and see if our penetrating moisture meter can detect any water in the building elements. As suspected, water was entering the home. Let's reveal a section of the carpet to assess the extent of damage that is being caused by this leak. Old 
has already developed in which the owner was unaware of. I had to find the source of the leak to determine how to eliminate the water ingress into the children's bedroom. It is wet and cold, yet my focus was solely to find this naughty little leak. Unbelievable! The builder has installed a cabbing made out of foam. It appears that an unknown creature has been consuming the foam leading to the accelerated deterioration of the foam. This is just poor workmanship. HB 39 2015 specifies that a capping must have a minimum of 15 mil cover. What were these guys thinking? HB 39 clause 5.3.3 states that after the sump or rain heat is installed, the outlet must permit total drainage. As I made my way to the lower roof of the home, I could not believe my eyes. The internal framework was visible. This is a breach of the National Construction Code where it states that a roof and external wall must prevent the penetration of water that could cause unhealthy or dangerous conditions or loss of amenity for the occupants and undue dampness or deterioration of building elements. Any penetration must be sealed as per the Guide to Standards and Tolerances Clause 7.08 and also AS 3500.1 clause 2.4.3 requires plastic pipes and fittings to be protected from direct sunlight. And lastly, HB 39 clause 5.7.7 .7 states that spreaders must discharge in the direction of flow. The roof covering did not even have the minimum fall requirement of one degree. The capping was also just butted against the wall. With no upturn and pressure flashing installed, leading to the water ingress into the home. These dodgy renderers are simply dodgy. This whole parapet needs to be stripped and redone. The alfresco area had a perfect fall away from the drain and towards the home. This builder is clever. The Australian Standards AS2870 Clause 5.2 Drainage Design Requirements states that surface drainage shall be designed and constructed to avoid water ponding against or near the footing. It shall be graded to fall 50 mil minimum away from the footing over a distance of 1 meter and shaped to prevent the ponding of water. The ponding of water has made its way into the home. This can be verified 
by the swelling of the skirting and the bowing of the timber floors. Let's finish up this video by quickly inspecting the bathrooms. What a beautiful bathroom! The vanity was about 19 mil out of level. The James Hardy Underlays Installation Guide states that movement joints must be provided where the floor dimensions exceed 5 meters. Let's head to the master ensuite. I am actually in love. Ah, uh, take that back. There was no water stop separating the shower area from the wet area. And also no water stop around this penetration. When the water table under the tiles reaches this penetration, it will make its way downstairs. And more out of level vanities. Please share this video to spread more awareness. Till we meet again, my friends.